Welcome to Liberty Explained, your guide to libertarianism. My name is Chris Spangle. Our goal is to share libertarian solutions for the future. Visit libertyexplained.com to subscribe to the podcast and to search our library of issues and book recommendations. We are part of the We Are Libertarians podcast network. Like I said, my name is Chris Spangle, and with me is my co-host, Julia Geyer. Julia, how are you? I'm awesome. How are you, Chris? I'm doing well. It's so great to be back. We took a long, like, year and a half hiatus. Uh, yeah. The downloads are crazy for the amount of people, so there's obviously some hunger. So we never wanted to give it up. We just had a very busy, like, year <laughs> since we've last we done We both this. had a lot of stuff to do. <laughs> yes, and we've lost Levy. Levy is now married and uh, did not want to return. It has nothing to do. There was no fight. There was nothing wrong, wrong with that. She was just... <laughs> You know, she's very busy with uh, her life, but we'll miss her. But for mm -hmm. now, it is Julia and I answering your questions, which you can send in questions right now at ask at we are .com if you have questions that pertain to libertarianism. And today's question, I can tell, will be a popular one because we get asked this one a lot. And it is, America is the only modern country without government-run health care. Is it time for us to get with the times, Julia? Uh, we're, we're just hopefully outdated. My first point to this always is, yeah, Denmark has like 10 million people. Canada has 30 million people. We have 330 million people. So it's yeah. uh, obviously a much different vector with that amount of people. So it's a little silly to compare us with like a European country that has 5 million people like Luxembourg. Berg. I agree. I mean, I feel like that's like we could compare a state to one of those, like maybe New Jersey or Connecticut or Florida, but, right. um, you know, population is, it should be, it should be considered because, you know, I mean, obviously like, I feel like the more centralized something is, the harder it is for it to like, um, reach the mass numbers and do yeah. a good job. You know, absolutely. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you look, look at Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, the bigger those get the VA, which has a very small portion of our population. Mm -hmm. It's socialized medicine. So uh, and you might check your mic, Julia. I think you might be oh. on the computer mic. Um, we'll Am just pause I, um, there and I can pick it back up. Sorry. What happened? No, you're good. Uh, I've never used this. Um... <laughs> Where's your mic positioned? Right in front of my face. Oh. It is. Is it? Bluetooth. Yeah. Maybe. What does it sound like? Maybe to you? just pull it closer to your mouth. Was I just too far? You're, you're too echoey. Yeah. It's literally right here. <laughs> okay. Is okay. That you're definitely you're definitely on the mic. Yeah. Yeah. There you yeah go. I am on the mic because it says I am. All right, cool. All right, so. Sorry about that. No, you're good. All right, so in some sense, getting with the times is the right sentiment, right? We have an outdated healthcare system that we need to upgrade, and it costs too much, and it gives too little in return. The Cato Institute reports that health expenditures exceeded $10,000 per American in 2016 and cost us a total of $3.6 trillion dollars. And Americans would be less concerned with costs if they felt they were getting the matched care. I had an incident today, Julia, where I called my doctor and uh, had had an incident that I won't go into. But I was like, yeah, I'd like to see my doctor. And they said, all right, it'll be two. Uh, I think the, uh, the appointment is June 7th. <laughs> and we were recording oh this on God. April 6th. So April, May, June, two months. It's two uh, months. Yeah, it's it's definitely a system that doesn't work for a lot of people. And I'm one of those fortunate people that has health insurance. Wow, you do? Yeah, I'm I'm bougie oh, like that. Excuse me. <laughs> excuse me, Chris. Stop bragging about it. OK, that's awesome. I don't have health care. No, oh, see, yeah. I mean, yeah. and so in, in your case, it can be extremely expensive if you go to the doctor. Yeah, you know, it's interesting, actually. So. I, you know, I, I'm a model. I've been a model for like 15 years. And before Obamacare um, was put into place, I was able to have a policy for like 250 a month and I had great insurance and it was fine. 
and then Obamacare happened and it really hurt like self-employed people. Um, and I had to stop getting health insurance because it got as high as like 1600 a month. Oh, wow. For me. And I, I don't have any health issues, thank God. And, you know, so I know the world of like not being insured. Um, basically as long as I don't have any like catastrophic accidents, it's actually super affordable. <laughs> yeah. But if something were to happen or like when I want to have a baby or, you know, when big things happen, it's a problem. Um, but when I go to the doctors, like it's actually interesting personally, like if I call a doctor, any doctor now, pretty much any doctor. And I'm like, can I have an appointment? And they say, same, it usually happens to me. Like they're like a month or two out. Right. And then, but when they find out I'm a self pay that I don't have insurance, they get me in faster because really? I pay cash. Yes, they do. That's it. I wonder why. I think they don't have they to deal with the money. Yeah. They don't right. have the rigmarole. It's just cash for them. And I think they love that because you know, they're still a business, you know what yeah. I mean? Um, and it's interesting, like whenever I'm at the doctors and they know, like, you know, you have like a nurse check you in and then you go through all this, you know, the steps of going to the room and they weigh you and take your blood pressure, whatever. Like, they're so aware that I'm uninsured <laughs> that every person that I see in that office is like, oh, you're uninsured. Okay. And they like look out for me every step of the way in terms of like labs or costs or it's kind of crazy. Like, it's I not don't really understand it. No, it's kind of how it's supposed to be. I mean, it, it's so. So let's jump into the notes because you're exactly right. Yeah. Like once you open it up and I've heard that from so many people that really? if you do self pay, you mm -hmm. you can get a lot of things cheaper because they're overcharging insurance companies. Yes. For a variety yes. of reasons. They're not as careful at checking uh, their big money. Like, really, do you feel bad about? Char overcharging your insurance company or even Medicaid or Medicare. Right. Um, so yeah, they, uh, you know, we've come to expect innovation in an industry that produces falling privacy prices and better service. Think of technology. You have better phones coming out all the time with a newer camera. Mm -hmm. I'd love to see lower prices, Apple, but uh, you're at <laughs> least giving me some innovation with uh, some of those you know, better services. Now, why does the medical industry fall behind other industries? Uh, in Liberty Explained, Ron, uh, Ron Paul writes, regulations, inflation, tax laws, and federal mandates to provide care through corporate-run HMOs interfere in providing insurance. Massive subsidies and licensing have all played negative roles in the delivery of medical care in the United States. Ron Paul, obviously a doctor, uh, he goes on to give the example of government mandated cell phones, right? Like I just did. And just a couple of decades, free market innovations took the cell phone from a clunky brick to the smartphone. Imagine if the government had declared a cell phone a right and that every American must have one for national security purposes. To offset the added burden, the government would centrally plan the development and rollout. After two decades, do we expect the federal government to have achieved as much as Apple or Samsung? Would there be an app with thousands of developers and the job that comes along with the growth of a new industry? You know, and another one that is often cited, Julia, is car insurance. It has mm -hmm. far less intervention in the marketplace from the government than does health insurance. It can be sold across state lines, which greatly increases the consumer base. Instead of being purchased in blocks by employers or governments, millions of individuals evaluate their choices and demand changes. Requirements allow for different types of coverage, which produce lower costs. Home insurance also works this way. And health insurance companies, Julia, just have far more restrictions on their business than car insurance companies yeah. or Apple or Samsung. So, you know, what if we extended the metaphor? What if government controlled and paid for car insurance? then right. they would then have the right to control the decisions of car owners and mechanics. And that's what's happened in the medical industry. He yes. who pays decides how you get care. And so you're stuck. I have a great episode on the Chris Spangle show about health insurance that kind of talks about this. I, you know, I called a direct primary care physician today and said, Hey, I'd like to get an appointment because I'm going to switch doctors because the doctor I see has to see like 10 patients a day to make his, 
cut and mm-hmm. he's in this like system that grinds doctors out and they have to see 10, 20, 30 patients. You see him for 10 minutes. Then they have to wow. refer you to someone in their network. Whereas a direct primary care physician, they opt out of the insurance system. You pay them a hundred bucks a month and then they'll do literal house calls. They, they're, they, it's a great innovation for doctors that kind of gives them a lot more freedom. They can spend two hours with the patient. They yeah. care a lot more and they really just need about 90 patients in their system paying $80, $100 a month for them to make their bills. Wow, that's great. I mean, I think, you know, what we're talking about today with healthcare is like the, the foundation principle is that everything that the government gets involved in really becomes compromised like any industry because you know it's the same thing actually i think something similar is like with like student loans like once government started subsidizing student loans college tuitions went through the roof and you know we see that across the board in every industry as soon as the government gets involved in an industry it really takes a toll on the industry it slows it down it reduces efficiency um and it it hinders growth across the board. Yeah, I mean, you talk about the. I mean, I am. I don't know about you. You're very young and vivacious still. I'm an old man, but I remember. Chris, we're the same age. <laughs> oh, I remember how cheap college was when I first went in 2002. You know, it was it was about was half. It, it, it was it was about half. I mean, it wasn't. Wow. They weren't backing student loans yet in the same way. And I remember once that clicked, it's, you know, it's when I went back a couple of years ago, it was way more expensive. And oh, it's was same, it? Yeah, it's the same with healthcare costs. Nixon mm. invites the health insurance companies to come in <laughs> and write the law that basically it, it, the HMO Act in, I think, 72. And from there, you just see the cost of healthcare astronomically rise yeah. because the health insurance companies basically got to use the force of the government, the force of state yeah. to to help their bottom line. And, you know, who paid us? We did. And it, it's frustrating to hear people <clears throat> requesting like a socialized healthcare system and something that's like, you know, controlled by the state because the reason they're unhappy with the healthcare system right now is because of the state, but they don't understand that. And then for people to call for more centralization and more state intrusion is just like, I, I it's hard. I think it's hard for us <laughs> to hear things like that because they don't understand like the, the, the process of like the breakdown of an industry when the state inserts itself. Yeah, I mean, the answer to a freer future is allowing more innovation. We saw a lot of this through the pandemic, right? Let's look at where the pandemic succeeded, you know, and and who succeeded through the pandemic uh, and who didn't. And you look at uh, ventilator distribution, which ultimately were not needed, uh, but it became political as the president and government tried to fight over where they ought to go. You remember Cuomo and Trump fighting about that. Regulations were rapidly removed to allow innovation. So you had a lot of regulations rolled back uh, in things like vaccine distribution and development. Mm -hmm. Uh, You 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 know, I remember the whatever you think of vaccines, like I remember being told on the news, oh, it'll be five years and then it was nine months Um, and testing. I mean, think about testing, how that was bottlenecked. There is a great New York Times article article called The Lost Month, where the CDC and the FDA caused thousands, tens of thousands, millions, maybe even of needless deaths because we didn't have the testing that we needed because the CDC wanted to control the patenting of the testing. And so it forced private companies to go to Germany and German companies to get sequencing and added a month. And so when you're talking about um, how we can get with the times, further centralizing healthcare uh, is not the way to go. The future is based on the empowerment of individuals making choices, which spurs innovation. It is not a return to a large centrally planned economy. And every libertarian believes that human beings should have access to quality healthcare. Julia, we don't disagree in any way that 
you know, with the goal of like people who no. believe in a single payer system, everybody should have affordable, accessible health care. We just yes. disagree on the true path to getting there because yes. what we've been doing has not been working. Yeah, we we want it to be a free market solution. We don't want it to be a state based solution. That's really the only difference. I mean, we have the same goal, but, you know libertarians we don't want to rely on the state we don't want to have the state have control over especially control over our bodies yeah you know i mean healthcare is so personal obviously because it's our health it's our bodies and you know we should have agency over every decision of our body and when there's something blocking that it's wrong you know, I, like, I feel whether... like, I mean, you you and I both like looking at this, it doesn't matter if you come from the left or the right. Mm -hmm. I think everybody that lived through the pandemic over the last two years, like you see the other side is predatory. Like if you come from the left, you look at Donald Trump and you don't really want him making decisions. If you're on the right, you don't really want Joe Biden making decisions. And That's you see the, the, bo the bottlenecks. And so when we make these things political, you you're opening up like. Are we really going to get solid bills out of Congress that craft proper healthcare solutions? Like, are they going to really be able to craft something like, like you said, with the Affordable Care Act, with Obamacare? You're, the mandate was always BS. OK, you you could just not pay it. They'd, they'd take it out of they, they never send you a bill for six hundred dollars. They take it no, out of a refund. Yeah, if exactly. you had a refund. Right. They so you could hold you through your taxes. Right. And so you you had this loophole that then this whole innovation sprung out of that loophole in the Christian healthcare share ministries where people, by and large, with the more reputable com companies get good care. Now, there's mm -hmm. obviously people that are not giving good care with the Christian uh, healthcare ministries, but you've got to do your homework. You've got to actually like go out and engage in the process of debating who is a good actor and who is not. And yeah. with our current health care, like, I just take whatever work gives me. I don't know anything about whether or not that's the best product. And when yeah. I started looking into it, there are a lot of better products out there that could save me half. It's just that really? I don't question it because I'm not out there shopping around for health insurance because I don't need to be a consumer. And once you open this up so there's a lot of consumers, you're going to get a lot more choice. The power of the market starts to kick in. Mm -hmm. And more informed signals start to tell health insurance companies, we want this. We want it to go across state lines. We want this product. I don't need this. I don't need that. You know, as opposed to something like Obamacare, where they mandate that you have 10, that you must cover these 10 things. Well, I don't personally on my insurance need, you know, maternity care. You might want that. But why yeah. should I be forced to pay for maternity coverage? when you need it and I don't. So it's, it's things like that, that, you know, the, the cost is so much more because the government wants to please special interests and mandates that yes. you have to cover certain things. Yes. And it's just like, it, this is, I feel the same way about this with healthcare as I do about any tax is that the bottom line for me is that anytime I'm, Anytime my power of voting with my dollar is removed from me, I don't like that system. Right. And our healthcare system is very much like that. And so are obviously taxes are the perfect example of that. Um, it removes our ability to vote with our dollar. And I, I just feel like that's something that gets under my skin so much. Well, it's part of why it's so expensive. I mean, yes. the way that market, markets work through price signals. And so every dollar that you spend, it sends a signal to a company or to exactly. somebody that they want something or stop doing something. Or and the more you interfere in that mm -hmm. signaling, the, the more messed up it gets. So Yes, it's so basic and really like simple, but I don't know. I, I, I think, I hope that, you know, people that are like wanting a socialized health care system and comparing it to Europe, like I, I, I just hope that they know some people there that actually experience it, you know, because 
there are countries that have really socialized healthcare that have terrible healthcare systems. And a lot of those people come here for their healthcare. Um, but People don't talk about that much. You know, I know people like that, but. And, and I've, I, I mean, and I've had those conversations of people who have had great experiences with, you know, their care system. But mm -hmm. at, at the end of the day, our size different makes it, it's a different calculation. You know, with 320, yeah. 370 million people in this country, it, it's uh, do we trust our current leadership to craft something that's going to work? Um, I mean, I don't, <laughs> I don't, <laughs> not after the no, last few don't. years for sure. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, look at COVID. we, uh, we will dive more into healthcare. We've got a lot more healthcare questions and we'd love to have your questions, but Julia, any final thoughts? Um, I think for anyone that's listening, I would just encourage you to like dig underneath dig below like what you're what you're supporting like what what are the principles behind this what are what are you know ask questions about like what's what is this built on who's paying for this what are the costs like i think it's just like learning about the details of what it is and like push yourself to like explore a different thought see process how the current it. systems are already operating instead of operating on wishful thinking and yeah. what feels right. Let's look at what right. happens. Who, what, what's the actual yeah. experience? Look at the fraud that comes out of Medicare, Medicaid. Oh, uh, and that would only a waste increase. of money. Right. And it's not about greed. It's about the fact that the system collapses because, you know, again, going back to Obamacare, if mm. you are in one of these Affordable Care Act plans, you have to go to one of the providers for care source. Well, they limit the amount of money that they pay those doctors. And so do you think that you get the best doctors working at a hospital that takes care source? No, you get the doctor that they can afford uh, mm -hmm. as opposed to private plans where you can go and see any doctor within network and with like somebody like Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield. It's a, it's a pretty wide net. So the people yeah. who are stuck in an ACA plan have limited care. They don't have as good a care as you know somebody with more private insurance with a lot of different choices why because the public plan essentially that is mandated again that list of 10 things well you you uh you have limited choice because of cost controls so uh i i hope this helps i hope that uh, you got something out of it if you did please share it with your friends we appreciate you so much We'd love to hear your questions that you might have. So please email us at ask at we are libertarians.com. If you enjoyed the conversation, then please review us on Apple Podcasts. We will see you again. We're going to start releasing these on the 1st and 15th of every month. Uh, so yep. Julie and I will be here twice a month with you answering your questions. So stay yep. tuned. Thank you for joining us here on Liberty Explained. <laughs>